And welcome back again to Community Viewpoint. Once again, I'm John Pollock, your host. And thank you for watching. Uh, it's not that hot this week, so uh, thank you for staying in and watching this show. Uh, we had a wonderful hot uh, weekend last weekend. We did a lot, like I mentioned in the first segment, and we're going to be talking about uh, the Liberty uh, Fest a little bit and something that's coming up in the future, the Fall Festival. And to do that, we have Sally Kerr from the Chamber of Commerce. You are the CEO. I am. Yes, you are. And you are sitting next to me. <laughs> and um, you put on quite a festival. And if uh, I just picked up yesterday uh, the, the Mirror newspaper and Robin, did, uh, she did the pictures too? She did the pictures and the story. They, she did a beautiful job. This is just uh, right in the middle. It's very, very, very nice. So the weather was a little warm, but did that uh, hurt? At all? You know, um, it's ah. all relative in July. Yes, so it is. Um, we were really pleased. We kept saying all weekend, well, you know, it's only going to be 104. Right. Because um, it could have been 115 That's or 112. True. Yes. And so it really, it was, it was beautiful. Um, Saturday, especially, we had some cloud cover. And so oh, on and off most of the day, it was pretty, it was pretty nice in the park. And mm -hmm. of course the park filled up in that, that afternoon. Um, so the weather actually was, was really nice. The wind storm didn't happen until a few hours after the fireworks. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was at the park extremely grateful that that had hit when it did and not two hours before. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I think, I think it went really well. And I know you're, in the morning you were enjoying yourself when you're walking barefoot through the park. Barefoot through the park, yes. I mean, exactly. Yeah, yes. They can always point me out. They're like, oh, her shoes are over there somewhere. Yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so are you happy with uh, the way it turned I out? I am happy with the way it turned out. You know, we were basically at the maximum number of vendors we could have for that event. Um, you saw they were completely circling the park. Mm -hmm. um, we had the water slides and the... Um, um, bounce houses. Mm -hmm. um, the fire truck came. That was a huge hit. And um, we learned a few things. One is um, I probably tried to be a bit ambitious with a number of days. And so give my vendors a break and maybe cut those hours down next year a little. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, really, it went well. I mean, as long as you have the weather, it, it's bound to go right. at least decent, if not well. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I've had really nothing but good comments from the vendors, from the public. Um, it was very well received. The fireworks show was amazing. It was John O'Brien. It was John O'Brien. Yes. Mm -hmm. He just loves shooting those things. Yeah, out. he yes. does. That's his, um, you, this show is kind of his, his uh, community love. I mean, it's yeah. so, he did a great job. And overall, I've heard nothing but great things about it. Right. So. And when he comes on the show, he hasn't been on for a while, but he doesn't need a microphone <laughs> <laughs> and voice. No, it is. Yes. Probably not. Yes. But yeah, the, the fireworks were beautiful. We also saw the fireworks down from the uh, uh, on Gamebird. Right, from uh, the shooter site. Yes. Yeah. So we have an option for fireworks. And there. I heard great reviews on that. Um, I did, for the seven days they were open, there was two weekends that they were open, oh, three, they three one okay. day and four another, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, they got great crowds. They were respectful. They obeyed the rules. They were very happy to be there. Mm -hmm. Everything about that went really smoothly. So the shooter site um, was a great addition for people who wanted to be able to come down and shoot off. Well, this, that's the nature of the beast out here. Uh, and maybe in the Midwest, something like that wouldn't uh, work as well as it does out here. Right. We have the wide open spaces here, too. And, uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit better out here. And, and evidently, it worked. Right. And yeah, I heard great reviews about that. So Very that's good. awesome to be adding that. So final word on that. So we move forward to we the We can future. move forward. The next day, we of course, we went right back to our fall festival planning. Yes. So. And like myself, if you go to the town of Pahrump, PahrumpNV.org, and you click up above on top, a little bit to the right for the fall, from Fall Festival, the, the next page you'll say the management of the Pahrump Fall Festival <laughs> has officially changed. The Pahrump <laughs> Valley Chamber will now be running and producing the Fall Festival. For questions, contact 775-727-5800 or visit the Chamber's website at prumpchamber.com. And that would be this lovely lady. Right. So um, how do we get there? We just go through the Chamber. From you can go on. to the Chamber, and there's a fall festival um, icon right on the right-hand side of the page. And you, it says, you know, more information. And you click there, and all of our applications are there. Um, the parade applications are there. Everything is held on the website. And of course, 
we get lots of questions. We want people to call with questions, anything okay. we can do to help them. As we're starting on the subject, what's the dates? The dates are September 24th through the 27th. Okay. The last full weekend in September. Okay, we'll come back to that right at the end too. Right. Yes. Right. It's not too early to be planning. I'm getting I am getting vendor applications in every day. So um, vendors are signing up. Um, the planning is well in hand. The rodeo was planned. The entertainment schedule is already being planned. The contracts have been signed. Um, arts and crafts is well in hand. Uh, the Shadow Mountain Quilters is heading that up again this year. Okay. And those applications are also on the website. So if you want to bring down your quilts or your canned vegetables or your homemade breads or your vegetables from your garden, um, all of those are available. Um, there have been notices in the paper, the Prep Valley Times already about those applications. Um, it's not too soon. I know it seems like a long way away, but it's really not. It's, a, it's around the corner. Now the applications, can they be filled out online? They cannot be filled out online. You can um, but you can download them, them and then fill, fill them, them out. out and then you can fax them to me. You can call me. Okay. Um, it, you can email them. You can deliver them however you need to get them to us. Very good. What was, I was going to ask something. We're going to have beer? Yes, we're going to have plenty of beer. Cold <laughs> beer. Yes. Cold beer. Yeah, cold beer. Um, and the rodeo is going to be two nights? The rodeo is Friday night and Saturday night. Okay, that works out well uh, rather than do something on Sunday afternoon. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. Evening is the best time for the rodeo. Without a animal, doubt. Animals and, and the people. Right. Yeah, and the rodeo, of course, is very well received. We did get the, um, the same halftime show that came last year. It's coming this year bigger and better than ever. Mm -hmm. So they're going to come. They were the um, alpaca riders. And um, I think that's how you say that name. Um, but interestingly enough, their name is Apache spelled backward, is how they came up with their name. And they are um, riders coming from I Idaho. Oh, okay. So great. it's a troop of riders. So they will be here. And um, the things I really wanted to highlight, there were a couple of things. One is, as we took this over and began to coordinate this event, one of the first things we wanted to do was get our local people back into our festival. So this is your first year? This is our first year. You can't be blamed for anything in the past. They will blame me. They'll blame you anyway. <laughs> but okay. yes, I cannot be blamed for anything in the past. Yes. Um, this is our first year, and we're doing what we really have came on saying is, you know, last year was a really successful event. Mm -hmm. The town did a really nice job. We are coming off of a high point. We want to copy them. And I'm not afraid to tell them that. Like, they have been very great about producing their records, being very helpful, coming to our meetings. Mm -hmm. We want to reproduce a successful event. Mm -hmm. So we are basically walking in their footprints with most of that and not making very many changes, kind of walking through at one time with it being successful, not changing, not reinventing a bunch of wheels, You'll but really just learning how they did it successfully. Mm -hmm. And then next, you know, then we can look at changing things. But, Take but suggestions, that, see what worked exactly. and what didn't work. So you can't, you know, if you haven't done it once, it's really hard to make any changes. So I just keep telling people, you know, we're going to copy the successful one from last mm -hmm. year with a few minor changes. One of those not so minor changes was we wanted to get local people back into the festival and had been told that they really had been priced out. So, you know, someone who spends her some, her year crocheting something and wants to sell it at the festival and couldn't afford the $200 for the oh, booth okay. plus the $140 for insurance and now was at a $400 weekend to come to the festival, they weren't coming because they couldn't afford it. So what we did was we created two rows of booths outside of the Bob Rood Center. So the, you've got the Bob Rood Center that's arts and crafts mm -hmm. are already in there. And the first two rows that go along that street, you know, you've got one on the street side and one on the sidewalk side that face the street. Right, right. Those are going to be booths for local nonprofits oh, and cool. for local hand crafters. Mm -hmm. So they would come to me with a zip code that's a local zip code and proof that their items are handcrafted and their booths will be $100 instead of two. So we're going to cut those booth prices in half. And we also have a group insurance that we found. I'm writing that down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's really important because all of a sudden, even somebody like an informational nonprofit, mm -hmm. instead of paying $200 plus $140 in insurance, now they can come for $100. And the group insurance rate we found was $39 for the event. So they can go online. And we have that insurance information. Of course, they can call me and I can get it to them. Um, but. Um, so we were able to go outside to a different insurance company because we aren't a town, so we didn't have to use the municipal policy. Okay. We get that. That's one of the benefits of having a private organization mm -hmm. do it. 
And so now we have local handcrafted vendors that can come in at $100 plus $39 for insurance. That covers their four days. And if two of them want to share a booth, you know, now they're splitting that in half. Right. You know, I mean, we really want to make it affordable. And I really want to get the word out that it's there for them and that we want to see them back. Like, that's a primary importance to me that we get those, those, we have some very talented people here that have not been able to showcase their stuff before. In the last few years. Excellent. And it'll be the same issue with parking, though? There's always the issue with parking. Right. We have started to make some inquiries about running the shuttles. I don't know if you remember a few years back, it was that you could catch a shuttle at the Nugget or at Saddle West mm -hmm. and be shuttled into the park. So we have um, started some conversation about that. I hope to have better information about those shuttles soon. Because um, if we could even get just two shuttle buses running back and forth that would shuttle people back and forth. That made a huge difference with parking. Yeah, because I know our bus service is like oh, a year and a half away. Yeah, so. I know. I wish our buses were here. Yes. I wish our buses were here. We would use them for that. So, you know, this is going too well. We're, we, we're in our last two minutes. So. Oh, wow, really yeah. fast. OK, so, so one more quick thing, parade entries. Oh, we my goodness. We want to be sure that people recognize that it's not too late. It's, uh, the theme is good old days. So depending on where you are, um, good old days could be anything. Mm -hmm. yeah, but good old days is the theme. And um, parade entries are $40 for judged floats and 30 for non-judged. Okay. And it starts at the same spot over by the uh, dry cleaner? Yep. They'll be staging back behind the dry cleaner and honeysuckle. Going, boot, going to Boot Hill? And going to Boot Hill. Right. Yep. So, so you haven't changed that either? So. No. So remember that's the 24th through the 27th when our last uh, minute. So, and what else would you like to say? Just join us for Fall Festival. It's going to be a great time. Yes. Any, you have questions, call me. I'll be happy to answer any questions anybody has. And that's going to be 727-5800. And that's going to be right there. <laughs> so you could see right there, right, 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 right there. So, and we will see you uh, next week. You're bound to determine not to do that. <laughs> but thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you ne next time. Thank you for having me.